You can start it up. Okay, I'd like to call to order the Planning and Zoning and Historic Com uh, Commission uh, meeting of Thursday, November 3rd, 2022 at 6 p.m. And will Chris be doing the roll tonight? I will. Franco, yeah. you do the roll. Commissioner Myers. Present. Commissioner Feck. Present. Commissioner Stenick. Yes. Commissioner Scarpelli. Here. And Chairperson Brunner. Here. So with quorum met, as declared, we can proceed with the rest of the meeting. So our first order of business is the approval of the minutes. Um, do I, is there any discussion on the minutes or amendments that would like to be made before we have a motion? So I would like to add looking through, I saw on, now Lillian isn't here, I was watching the video. On item two, uh, we don't have the seconded by, it's just left blank as seconded by commissioner, but I believe that was Lillian. Oh, um, public hearing two. Mm. Uh, yours looks different than right here. In here. There. Oh, okay. There. And then additionally, uh, my vote on that motion was a no. Which it says I voted yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, is there any other discussion? Amendments. I'll make a motion subject to the changes made here tonight that we approve the October 6, 2022 meeting minutes per the amendment and as presented. I'll, I'll second. second. Great. With the motion and a second, uh, unless there's any further discussion, uh, Franco, call the roll. Myers? Yes. Feck? Yes. Stenick? Yes. Carpelli? Yes. Brother. Yes. Okay, is there, now on to the next order of business, public comment, is there anyone in the audience who would like to make a public statement to this commission not related to our business tonight? Seeing no, we will move on to uh, our new business. Um, and this will be our new business, our first item will be the public hearing for, uh, regarding petition from 590 Healy LLC for a a request for special use for outside vehicle parking and equipment parking and storage for the property with 590 Healy Road, East ND, IL 60118, PIN 0130300009000000 in the M1 Manufacturing District. Secondly, a request for special use for CCDD, salvage and reprocessing of concrete and asphalt for the property 590 Healy Road, East ND, IL. 60118 PIN 0130300009000 in the M1 Manufacturing District. Thirdly, a variance request from Section 157147B2 and 157149B requiring off street parking areas shall be paved with asphaltic concrete or comparable hard surface all weather dustless material at 590 Healy Road, East ND, Illinois. 60118-01300300009000, the M1 Manufacturing District. And fourthly, a variance from section 157.149D requiring lighting illumination of an off-street parking area shall be arranged so as not to reflect rays of light into adjacent residential districts and street. All lighting shall be extinguished not later than 30 minutes after the close of business of the use being served except as may be otherwise authorized by the Village Board of Trustees. For 590 Healy Road, East ND, IL 60118, PIN 0130300009000 in the M1 Manufacturing District. I will make a motion that we open the public hearing for uh, the petition from 590 Healy Road, LLC for items one, two, three, and four as listed on our agenda. I'll second that. With a motion and a second, any further discussion? Franco, call the roll. Myers? Yes. Feck? Yes. Stanek? Yes. Scarpelli? Yes. Brunner? Yes. So before we get started with the presentation, uh, did we get any contact from uh, Village via call, Village residents or businesses via email or a phone call? Okay, so, um, and I think, do we have, oh, we do, sure. 
Yeah, and then then we'll do your suggestion. Uh, no, I'll do. We'll do that at the vote. Okay, we'll sounds good. Vote. Okay, so um, I assume both of you would like to speak during the the meeting. If uh, so, we we will we will need to swear you. And when you do speak, just speak into the microphones so you can hear. Okay. So you swear, uh, raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth. We do. Okay. Great. So um, at this point, if there is a, a representative of the petitioner that would like to um, make a presentation, feel free. Uh, my name is Steve Kaminsky with Mackey Consultants. Uh, we are the civil engineers and surveyors uh, representing the uh, 590 Healy LLC, uh, acting as their agent tonight. Uh, also present is a representative from uh, for, from 590 LLC, but primarily uh, I'll be I'll be addressing the, uh, the board and answering questions. Uh, if you need contact info. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I think probably everybody's had a chance to. Uh, do I need to stand by the mic? Or yes, please. Okay, so we are. Uh, everyone's probably had a chance to to see the packets and mm -hmm. see the four specific things uh, we were requesting. Uh, which is, I'll, I'll just take them in order so that I stay organized. Um, the, the special use uh, request for outside vehicle uh, equipment and parking storage. Uh, what, what's going on there? Actually, maybe I should uh, stop and take a step back and tell you about the site and what's happening today. So prior to my client's acquisition of the property, it was owned by um, uh, Prairie Materials and they conducted aggregate mining and uh, after they had mined out all of the, uh, the economically viable sand and gravel on the site, uh, they procured a, uh, what's called a CCDD permit, a Clean Construction Demolition Debris Permit. Uh, I think uh, you may be familiar with the concept. I think there's a couple others in town. But essentially what that is, is it's a permit uh, issued by the IEPA as well as uh, Cook County regulates it as well, in, in which uh, construction site excess soil, uh, broken concrete, uh, broken asphalt, and brick rubble uh, can be disposed of within certain parameters. You have to you have to test it for cleanliness, make sure there's no uh, uh, contaminants. The the source document the sources of all that material has to be documented. In the case of lead paint or brick, or uh, in the case of asphalt or bricks with paint on it, you have to ch test and make sure there's no lead in the paint. There's a variety of regulations involved. Uh, and and the, the purpose behind that regulation at the state level is to allow for these sites that were dished out as part of the mining process to be filled back into no higher than what the adjacent grade was prior to mining so that the, the property can be returned to an economically viable use rather than just being a hole in the ground that sits there forever that isn't useful to anyone. Um, they can be reclaimed, and then after after the, the filling is complete, they can once again become a uh, productive source of uh, economic activity in, in the community. And so, where uh, when 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 uh, 590 Healy LLC purchased the property, uh, that permit was already in place. We we transferred that permit from IEPA to our to uh, the current ownership, and we began to look at what the possibilities were for redevelopment after it was complete. And so one of the things that was included in your packet is a concept plan that shows our vision for what we expect to happen after the reclamation is done. And that's, that's, that's looking pretty far forward, but that's kind of what we have to do in this process is think through uh, how we're rec reclaiming the site so that we don't uh, reclaim it in a manner that is incompatible with what we want. For example, uh, the, uh, the the future use would likely involve uh, some some buildings, especially at the south end, which would present an attractive uh, front door to the community, uh, especially along Route 72. Whereas we would uh, propose to reserve some of our more heavy industrial uses, such as the the the, the, the semi truck parking, as well as the uh, the crushing and recycling operation in the rear. Uh, there was, I think, for a time, a little bit of unclarity uh, on what was transferred as part of the, the, the permit when uh, the, the, the CCDD permit transferred from Prairie to the 590 LLC folks. Uh, I think there was kind of a difference of, a, at least a misunderstanding as to whether 
crushing and recycling concrete and asphalt was inherently part of that process. But in order to clear up any of that doubt, that's what we're here for today, is we would like to be able to do that. Uh, the, the economic reason for that is quite a bit of the, the, the CCDD materials that comes in consists of either concrete or uh, chunks and or asphalt grindings. And there's really not a good reason to just dump that in a hole, right? That's a, that, that's a very useful and recyclable material. In fact, so much so that there's, uh, it's economically productive to take it, grind it up, reprocess it, run it through a gradation, and then be able to resell it as a, as a product that's in demand by the construction industry. And in doing that, we, we you know, reduce the, the amount of kind of, kind of waste fill that happens as well as reduce the depletion of the natural resources of virgin limestone uh, resources across the, uh, the the region, and so what we're what we're the, the the first element of what we're asking for actually I guess that's the second <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute but that's that's one of the things we'll be looking at tonight um, now during the during the process uh, as as the as the the reclamation proceeds the uh, the, the site can be economically useful to, to my client as a, as a place where commercial trucks can be parked. As you're probably no doubt aware, the, uh, the regulations on the, the, the semi-trucking industry are uh, getting tougher all the time in terms of mandatory rest periods, uh, things like that. They, there's, a, there's a very high demand for a place for semi-trucks to be able to safely park during downtimes, whether it's during mandatory rest periods, during the time in between uh, loads, et cetera. And so that's one of the services our client would like to be able to provide uh, with this site in the, the, the first part of our special use application. And we are, where we are proposing that is to permanently uh, seek that special use on the north side of the proposed Heinz Road. And in the short, as, a, as a principal use for that portion of the area, I think there's a, uh, a second exhibit in the packet that looks like this kind of delineates areas where each of these special uses would apply. Uh, so I think that was, uh, that was presented to you. So the, the, the portion of the area, or the portion of the site north of Hines Road that's uh, delineated as truck parking, we would seek that as a special use to allow truck parking as a principal use for the site. South of Hines Road, we, we, would be, we would also like to request the uh, permission, so special use for truck parking in the interim condition while the redevelopment is happening as a principal use before we have a building. Once we find a user and we get far enough where we can build the uh, uh, one of the, uh, the first of those two buildings shown, the, the, the special use would refer to an accessory use. I, and it, so it would look something like what you're seeing in front of you, where the principal use would be within the building, and then the, 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 the truck parking would be an accessory to that. And the reason you see on the exhibit, there's a, there's a delineated portion at the far south end, is we recognize that the village does not want to have uh, truck parking right up against Route 72. So that's, a, that's an area that's set aside for the, the future construction of the building. And even in the interim condition, we wouldn't have trucks parked in that portion of the zone as, as delineated in the exhibit. The, the, the second, so, so that's kind of a description of what we're requesting in uh, item number one on the agenda. The item number two, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, really valuable resource consisting of broken concrete and asphalt rubble that comes in the door from construction sites where the construction site itself doesn't really have the capability of processing it and reusing it on the site themselves because they don't have the screens, they can't get it back into the proper gradation where it makes up, where, where they can get it into a form that's suitable for things like trench backfill or for the aggregate base course of new pavement. But when you, when you have a site like what we like want to do here where we can process it, where we can run it through the various different screens, that becomes very much a marketable commodity and we, we, we become a valuable service to the construction industry where they send us a full truck full of surplus dirt and or concrete and or asphalt. They dump that, then they go right back to their site with a load of processed, uh, uh, recycled stone that they need on their site. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's an efficient use of everybody's resources. We reduce the total number of trucks on the street because we don't have any empty trucks driving around back and forth. They're actually uh, 
they're actually making productive use both ways, fewer, fewer deadhead loads, so to speak. Uh, so that, that's, that's kind of the basis of why we're requesting the, uh, the special use to, uh, to conduct that, uh, that crushing and recycling operation for the concrete and the, and the asphalt. Um, number three is really related to the first one. In the areas where we are parking heavy trucks, we are requesting a variation to be allowed to use recycled asphalt grindings as our pavement surface. And this, this particular surface has a lot of, uh, a lot of advantages for that use. Um, uh, the, the, the trucks, of course, impose a heavy load. They, um, and they, uh, they can tend to beat up regular asphalt uh, pavement in a, in a relatively large hurry. But also we have a significant amount of fill on this site, which varies quite a bit. So there's, there's, there, this kind of site uh, experiences a little bit of settling. So if you put something like uh, concrete, which is a rigid pavement, and part of it has a little bit of settling, your concrete breaks up in a relative hurry. So the advantage of the asphalt grindings is if there's a little bit of settling, well, guess what? We generate asphalt grindings. We have, we have loaders, we've got rollers. It's, uh, we're, we're very, very well suited to maintain that pavement. And the advantage it has over virgin uh, limestone uh, gravel parking lots is it doesn't make the dust because that, 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 that recycled asphalt still has uh, that coating, uh, the residual amount of uh, uh, asphaltic cement kind of built into it. So it doesn't have the, 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 the powdery content that what we call the CA6 uh, virgin limestone gravel parking lot wood. Uh, so it's, it's really kind of the best of both worlds for an application like this. Um, and that's why we would request the use of that in the truck parking areas only. When we get to the point where we develop, um, for example, at the south end where there's car parking areas or where there's common traffic aisles, uh, that would, the, the, those would resort to ordinary compliance with your ordinance. Uh, so it's really just for the truck parking that we're seeking that, that particular variation. And then the last item relates to uh, 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 the interpretation of the, the, the site lighting. Uh, because of the nature of the way the business and the fact that it isn't open to the general public, we don't actually see the need to install permanent lighting in the truck parking area. And we think that's actually uh, a a better service to the adjacent forest preserve and the, the, the habitat uh, preservation mission that they have than, than would be installing permanent, uh, uh, permanent light fixtures. So hopefully I didn't uh, um, um, too, many, too many times in there, but if you have any questions, I'm certainly available to answer them. What's going to be in the buildings uh, to the south eventually when that gets built out? It's difficult to predict with complete confidence right now, but our expectation is that it's going to be related to uh, um, regional trucking firms. It's very likely to be uh, truck servicing. You can kind of see there's some dashed lines running through those buildings. Mm -hmm. For the, the, the building to the further north, we expect that one to have overhead doors on both sides, uh, whereas the one on the south would have a fairly limited number of doors on both sides, whereas the rest would be more uh, parts parts inventory, uh, office and administrative kind of things. Mm -hmm. And we did that on purpose to try and pr uh, uh, present the best looking building facade to, uh, to Route 72. Yeah, and you said everything to the south of Heinz Road that'll just be a regular asphalt parking lot. Right? The, uh, uh, all of the common circulation aisles, uh, we, uh, again, it depends, uh, for example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run on point to something sure. quick, then I'll come back to the microphone. For example, in an area like that where it would be really nothing other than trucks backing into place, we might ask uh, for, the, for the application, for that, that, uh, that variance to apply in a situation like that. Perfect. But all the circulation aisles, uh -huh. all, the, all the circulation aisles that would be used by trucks and the cars and or uh, car vehicle parking would be ordinarily compliant with the ordinance. Mm -hmm. So are you suggesting that when the property was reclamated, the proper compaction methods were not used? The compaction methods are used, are, are, are done properly. What's difficult to control is the, le the moisture content of the materials that, is, that arrives. And so we have a wide variation of moisture content in those soils, ranging anywhere from 
you know, very dry materials such as uh, crushed concrete, if, uh, although you, most of that would get recycled, hopefully. Um, but uh, we sometimes get wet clays. And so if it has, say, a, you know, a 20 to 25% moisture content, uh, we do tend to try to spread those in, in uh, rather thin layers, let them sun dry a bit before we hit them with compaction. But uh, depending on the season, it's not always completely practical. And so what we expect to do is focus our, kind of cherry pick our materials. And what we have been doing is you know, cherry pick the best stuff, send it towards the south side where the buildings are located. And uh, if we have wetter materials, they've been going in uh, to, the, to the west and to the north of the, the pond. And that moisture content, how, how deep does that go into the ground? Uh, the, the fill materials? No, well, the, the, just the, just the, the the moisture content that that you're saying would would clay tends uh, clay tends to, uh, to to stay pretty similar in in uh, in moisture content uh, over time. It will gra very very gradually. Uh, so there's two different things. So there's there's a, a procedure called compaction, where over time you squeeze the air out of the soil, and then there's what's called consolidation, where the pressure of the soil that's above it very very slowly squeezes the water out of the pores, so that the pores come closer together. And so that that migration of water, uh, you know, if if you, if you started with say a 25% moisture content of the clays you very likely get will never never drop below about 19 percent and and would, if it did migrate it would migrate towards the pond and as an engineer would you suggest that the asphalt or concrete hard surface driving areas needs to be a drier soil or drier footing than a building the uh oh, oh the, the conventional pavements you mean yeah the, the convention so you're asking for a variance from the hard surface, from the from the concrete and or asphalt, or I don't think you'd put in paver bricks, but a, from that type of driving surface as comparison to the building. Because okay, I, I think, what, I what I I'm hearing you say today is that that the site really isn't ready for asphalt or concrete yet. At some point, you're going to build buildings on it, and if the, if a user came in today. I would think that soil would pose the same problem to building a building today, which kind of tells me that maybe compaction was not done correctly. I see. Okay, so let me let me take that in two, in two parts. Uh, first, as a clarification, the thing that's most sensitive to soil settlement is the buildings. Next in order would be a rigid pavement like concrete. Next, uh, the next down in sensitivity would be conventional asphalt, and the least sensitive would be the asphalt grinding material. So the reason and the way we're, we're operating the fill, the, the, the fill business is the, the, the best soils that come in because each load is inspected. When the, when the truck arrives, it gets inspected to make sure the paperwork on the source and the cleanliness is good and he makes a visual inspection to make sure there's, uh, they, they pass a, what's called a photoionization detector that detects volatile or organic compounds. He's making sure there's no uh, foreign objects such as rubbish or building insulation or siding or things like that that aren't allowed uh, to be to be disposed of in a CCDD facility. And when he does that, they kind of eyeball and cherry pick whether this is a, a wetter load or a drier load. And so we've we've sent our best materials towards the south where we expect to have buildings and conventional pavements, and where we send the 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 wetter loads is to the north. Does that make more sense? Yes. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. So, oh, and Chris just left. Um, <laughs> so, um, the variance that we have, yeah. So the variance that we have for the lighting um, mm -hmm. is again on the how it shines, you know, outside of the property onto residential property, but his. What he said and what's in the, the packet is more along the lines of permanent lighting requirements, which I don't see in the, the ordinance that we're, we're asking for a variance. Is that somewhere else? Or I didn't review it, so yeah, I, I think this is the same same thing that came it, up it reads process. a little unclearly, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, uh, Chris wasn't here for the for the question. Yeah, the, the way the way I, I interpret it is lighting is required. Okay, they're asking 
not to do lighting per the code, which is a certain right. uh, photometric plan. Um, the fact that it doesn't shine on residential isn't really an issue because there isn't any residential. Right, exactly. But if there was, then it couldn't, okay. is the point. So I think that's the way. You know, so we're taking this right now specifically to be, you know, permanent lighting or not permanent lighting. Correct. Okay. Well, so then we'd certainly be uh, we'd certainly be open to a, a wording of that special use that that, that stipulated that uh, yeah. that you're not applying it to the whole site. For example, on the south south of, south of Hines, we yeah. expect to have to comply normally, uh, but you know north north of Hines, we would just we would just be seeking uh, something along the lines of relief from providing permanent. Yeah. Overhead lighting. So I, I took a, and, and Kasha let me see the property on, on Tuesday, and we, we happened to stay until it, it got dark, and it gets dark there, <laughs> really dark, and there were uh, maybe 10 people still like hanging around, walking around, and you know, there aren't roads, right? And in this, the, there aren't really roads, the way the parking's set up. So to me, it felt actually, me driving out, <clears throat> I was very wary you know, that something wasn't going to come out in front of me because you couldn't really see anything and I knew there were people walking around because mm -hmm. I saw them when I came in. So I'm wondering what your guys' thoughts are on, you know, because the truckers, they may have to come in at any time, right? Correct. And, you know, so there's going to be people in here, pulling in here at all times of day, theoretically. Uh, uh, yes, we don't we don't anticipate any hours on access for the truckers. Uh, yeah, we do. I, we do anticipate they'll all have headlights, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think this they were like, you know, congregating. You know, it's like people outside of their trucks talking. Ah. So, you know, and then as it got dark, I mean, I was in a car, so it was brighter in the car. Maybe their eyes had adjusted, but to me, it seemed like lighting at least. You know, in times when, when congregating is something we definitely will try to discourage. I mean, yeah. this uh, it's, it's not intended to be a social environment for the truckers. It's intended to be a a, a practical place where they can they can uh, they can right. park the truck after hours when they're not operating it. It's definitely not intended to be a truck stop or to provide services for truckers. And yeah. so we do we do want to refrain from anything that would invite uh, people to think that they can. Uh, stay in their sleeper unit yeah. there, or uh, you know things like that, and that, that's that's part of that's part of why we'd like to keep it simple. Well, I think and that's a real challenge, especially where you're located, because you're not by anything else, right? I mean, where are they going to go if they don't have a car there? I mean, are they going to walk a, a mile to the gas station or something? I, you know, it, it depends on the user. It depends yeah. on the user. Some well, of them will be local folks who yeah, commute to the site in their car, leave their car yeah. there during the day in their truck spot. And then flip yeah. them out at night. Uh, if they're guys who are, are who are out of staters and have a, 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 a contract, and I'm 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 speaking yeah. a little out of turn, that would be Jeff normally, and he's out of town tonight. Yeah. I'm sorry, um, but they, they, we we expect that they'll Uber to their hotel or something similar. <coughs> but um, uh, we definitely would not be permitting uh, folks to be camping out. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I hear you continually talk about the north of the proposed Heinz and south of the proposed Heinz, but currently today it's all one pin, it's all one lot. There, there's been no subdivision of any kind. So the upon development of any of the buildings south of what the Heinz road extension is, all of that would then change as you would file for a plat of subdivision uh, with the village and then all of those lots within there that would house the de development would then meet all the codes. So right now today, you're going for these variances and special uses on the entire parcel. Uh, uh, with the with the stipulation that we did describe the use areas in the exhibit that was in your packet. So for example, there was a right, right but, area. But, but I guess just us here, we're either going to grant these or not grant these, and whatever we grant doesn't follow that use thing. It follows the perimeter of the of the thing. So when we grant no whites and we grant no pavement, and that that's across the whole site. It's not per the use areas that that you've described. Hmm. That's an attorney question. I'm not sure I'm uh, <laughs> prepared to answer. Uh, do can we work a mechanism in there where? The, uh, 
in, in, a, in a previous uh, hearing we had, they outlined a specific six acres of, of, of a larger piece that would have this truck parking. Uh, and so at this point, you know, Fr Frank is right, the, the, all the variances would be for the entire parcel. But I, so when once, the special once, use ordinance is written, it doesn't refer to it, like it doesn't include the exhibit as uh, in part of the record. I, I guess we could include it as, a, as an exhibit, but the, I mean, Heinz Road we're planning on doing next year. That's the goal. Um, I'm not sure how long it's going to take to get the, the, the south end developed. And so there will be separate pins. Right. Well, at that right. point. Right. At, le at least at least two. Yeah. Correct. Uh, so who, who's going to take on the burden of building that road? Well, we're, we're working with uh, Cook County on a grant that okay. they that they said we were going to get correct. That yep. they, they, they said <laughs> that. Okay. So that that is wor we're working on that, um, and and if not, then we'll, we'll go some other route. But that is the um, the plan to get that road built. Okay. By roughly November of next year, and have it subdivided into at least two parcels, and they may do you know three depending on how they see the south end going. Uh, yeah, I saw when when I went in on the north end, you guys had it like addressed as six oh five. Is is the, does that number mean anything to anybody? By the gate at the very very north end, it said six oh five. Okay. That's yeah, the, the, That's right uh, is that the auto auction? Yeah, then it was just in a confusing, confusing yeah. spot. <laughs> it, it is a little bit, yeah. and I'll illustrate that the uh, the access for the auto action auto auction, I should say, uh, yeah. cuts through uh, my client's parcel via an easement that okay. you can see uh, in the aerial photograph. There, there's an easement that pretty much corresponds yeah. to where cool. that that side road is. So the, uh, the the so their their address probably does it's probably at the the cul-de-sac where where yeah. where uh, Healy Road ends now mm -hmm. so it's, it is a little confusing yeah. But it's still so for, for an okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Is it planned to have that tree line stay that you see from Route 72 on the corner of Healy Road and Route 72? The uh, the, the it looks at it looks like it. Yeah, the, 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 there's a significant amount of trees that are in the IDOT right of way. This mm -hmm. is off of the black line on the yeah. exhibit, mm -hmm. and uh, we did we did speak to IDOT. They may allow us to do a, uh, and this, we don't have any permits yet. They may allow us to do a slight amount of clearing at what's called the site triangle at the intersection there of Healy, uh, and, 72. Healy and 72. You guys want to take those out? Uh, just at the, just uh, in what's called the site triangle triangle, so that people can see around the corner a little bit better to make turns, yeah. but. Uh, across the, the rest of the bulk, the most we would potentially seek from IDOT would be uh, uh, permission to clear out things like uh, buckthorn and underbrush that are competing with the, uh, the nicer trees. <laughs> yeah, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of, is it visible from 72? You know, is this truck parking lot going to be completely visible? You know, it's uh, it's pretty substantially st screened by that vegetation today. Right now it is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so, we, we, like I said, uh, we, we would, uh, when we make a later submittal, when we actually know what building is going to go in there, um, I expect that there would be, as part of that, there would likely be some sort of a, a sign application to happen at the very southeast corner there. So we would probably want visibility for the sign mm -hmm. from Route 72, but for the bulk of the frontage, I think the IDOT will require most of those trees to be left in place based on my coordination with them to date. And one, one more question for me. When did your clients purchase this property? Do you remember the date? I believe it was 2019. 2019? Okay. What's on it right now? <coughs> it looks like this. It looks just like that. Yeah, it looks just like that. There's a, there's a, the, the other exhibit, the one that without the site plan has a, has a complete aerial photo on it. If, uh, if you had. Yeah, so there's to, already, you it's know. It's like one of the last few, pages in the packet. Yeah, yeah, quite a like few that. trucks there. What? You think it's like that? Yeah, there's yeah, quite a few yeah. trucks already That's parking correct. there and other cars and trailers. Another fill, bunch of mulch. Right. The uh, the mulch is being removed and yeah. the logs are being removed. That's part of the different that's, situation. That's where Illinois wood fiber was at one time. No, 
No, no it was just a landscaper that moved in there. Oh, yeah, okay. it's yeah. serious. Without, without a license, so that's being all removed. Yeah, it's a serious, it's a serious uh, amount of mulch. Right. Well, it, although Illinois wood fiber was on this parcel many years ago, probably back prior to 2006. Okay. Uh, when Prairie still owned it. Um, is there a reason why the applications tonight don't have the similar what happened on some of the other sites, the uh, variance for no screening? No fencing and screening? Uh, can you elaborate on what? Uh, I believe that there's a, a requirement to fence and screen the entire area that where these activities would take place. Which which activities in specific? Are we talking about the crushing operation? Uh, well, the truck parking for sure. I can't speak to the crushing. I recall that we voted on that one. First meetings that I was right. on the crush. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, you're talking about the orange crush? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next to the asphalt. Yeah, point? yeah. I, don't, yeah. I, I, I don't know that that was uh, we required it there, but the issue there also was that they had some hokey situation with the barrier that they had up. Yeah. Okay. They had the turned over uh, semi trailers. Yeah. yeah. So there was some issues with that. I don't know that in this case uh, it would be required. You're thinking that it's required. I, I, well, I, I, I'm thinking that it. it any type of operation like this in the in the M1 district, because uh, it's also something that was part of the uh, was Plody the one that asked for the land from the edge of the Peaker plant. Correct. A storage yard would require fencing. I don't know. If by definition, I can address the question. Uh, I, I don't know what the prior practice has been. Sure. I think uh, my advice to the client uh, as we evaluated this situation was that uh, to the south, uh, your, your, your most significant window is to the south where Route 72 is. And that's specifically why we worked with the client to develop a, uh, a, a long building kind of oriented in that direction that would provide uh, a substantial uh, as soon as we can, you know, as soon as, soon as we can get to that part, point where we can build it, that will uh, provide a substantial, uh, substantially attractive architectural feature there that you wouldn't, you wouldn't really see into the site from. On the east side of us is all forest preserve. That's there's, there's nobody there to see it. Uh, on the west, we already enjoy a pretty significant buffer that consists of the uh, uh, the ComEd right of way. That's uh, that just sets back anybody that really even is able to view the site a substantial distance that uh, provides a, a transition. And to, no, to the north is the uh, the auto auction site that, uh, well, it looks pretty similar to us. <laughs> and so when we looked at it, we just, we, we went, well, screen, screen us from what? Yeah, well, and I know like on their main entrance there that you can see, yeah. it's, um, there's concrete blocks and whatnot right there around their main gate. You really can't see in anywhere all along to the end. When you get to the back, I think there's even concrete blocks along the back. From Healy, you mean? Yeah, from Healy, you can't really see in at all. Um, you know, you can see the tops of some trucks that are like right on the edge, but that's about it. So I, I mean, it's not like the other properties that just seem like, you know, exposed out in the middle of the field. It almost feels like there's a bit of a rise and then these concrete blocks and then there's some vegetation. Um, and then, yeah, like, I think you, you guys are a bit higher than the, the auction, right? I think the back of your property. It, uh, it's it's a bit it's way. a bit of a yeah it's a bit of a twisty transition. At the far west side, they're higher than us. Oh, okay. at the we're far east side, we're a little higher than them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, then, but yes, uh, your your recollection is correct, and in fact, it does show on the site plan exhibits. It's fairly faint, but there are some uh, some concrete blocks that constitute uh, material storage bins that also okay. function as a screening barrier uh, along Healy. Yeah. And then further to the south, there is a fair amount of vegetation through there. Yeah, and then the, the gap between Commonwealth and your property is quite large, right? And that's just trees? There, no, I don't believe there's many trees along. Uh, along or is that just like grass? What's it's, the... It's yeah. grass. Yeah. tends to it's mow weeds. it every okay. two or three years, Oh, right? that's where the high, <laughs> the weeds, high voltage right? lines yeah. are, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. I didn't go down Commonwealth. So. Now I recognize the lines on the... <laughs> Okay. 
Any other questions uh, for the petitioner? No. Okay. So then could I have uh, a motion <coughs> to close the public hearing? I'll make a motion. Okay, a motion. I'll second. And a second with a motion and a second. I'll and second. Okay, so unless there's any further discussion, take the roll please. Myers? Yes. Beck? Yes. Stenick? Yes. Scarpelli? Yes. Brunner? Yes. Okay, uh, Chairman so Brunner, I would like to make a motion that we amend the agenda for voting on these four items to handle items three and four prior to one and two. And my reasoning is, is that uh, if, if three and four are not granted, then one and two, I, to me, become pointless. Okay? Uh, unless the I mean, we'll vote on all four, but the petitioner may, yes. So with that motion, any discussion? Or do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. The discussion before we vote, or are you guys ready to vote? He's moving three and four, too. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. makes sense. So That's fine. take the roll. Myers? Yes. Beck? Yes. Stenick? Yes. Scarpelli? Yes. Brunner? Yes. Okay. And now, so we're going to talk about, you know, what we're going to decide on this. And what I want you guys to let you guys know, our role in this town is to apply the variances uh, against uh, the legal test that we must, must follow for granting a variance. We then provide that output to our board. They're the ones who are responsible for actually approving it. So, you know, and our decisions are all fact-based. We can't really say, oh, the guys next to you did it, so you should be able to do it too. That's not something we can consider. That's something our board can consider. So just trying to level set if you get a little <clears throat> disheartened about some of the things we may say. We, we, we also, we're supposed to look at it primarily from the land use perspective and not from any monetary gains to the petitioner or to the, or to the village. That's, that's for the village board to, to uh, mull over and mm -hmm. consider all of that in making their decision. Yes. So let's start with number three then. So this is our uh, variance request uh, regarding off-street parking areas shall be paved with asphaltic concrete. So does anyone have some comments on there, you know, that they'd like to share with the rest of the board on what they're thinking? Um, well, me personally, I, we seem to be getting more and more of these requests. Uh, I've spoke to a couple different uh, semi-truck uh, providers of space, and uh, um, they make a pretty good buck at it. And uh, I'm just concerned that at some of the money, the volumes I've calculated, there's almost no, I, if I own the property, I would have no desire to ever develop it beyond truck parking because just rent it out yeah. what just rent it out J J yeah. just just rent it out on top of asphalt grindings and and to me unfortunately our, our special uses don't have a a sunset clause they as long as the owner wants to own it it runs forever so our entire industrial area could be nothing more than a bunch of semi-truck parking areas on top of asphalt grindings and no parking lot lights and no no landscaping or things of that nature and when does it end right you know mm -hmm. so I mean every time we when are we going to stop the amount of dust that we see coming into our yeah. town you know and it's not just them but mm -hmm. yeah it, or is it we just going to keep on letting it grow and grow and grow and then we're going to be a truck parking town right and um, well and well, we can't, we're not supposed to consider the monetary, so right. I, well, I, I won't even say it, but no. there, there are significant reasons why the village board may say yes to this, yeah. but from a, from a land use perspective, to me, from one, from one user to the next, it's, uh, yeah. it's, I feel like we're giving carte blanche to these users to just kind of take the, the, the ground as cheaply as possible and make it, make it into a viable business. Yes. I agree with that. Yeah. So then, th then we can look at this as a 24-hour business, right? There's going to be trucks entering and leaving at any time, and it's not just one company. Is this this is just a, a trucking? If I, if I had a Charlie Myers Trucking Company and I wanted to go park my semi there, I could. 
and I can leave at two in the morning and drive across the country and then come back. That, so I mean, there's that's my understanding, right? So it's just going to be a, a dark parking lot where people are going to be able to leave 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting thought to me. You know, I think we should consider. That I just want to make a comment that in um, I think in May, the village board passed an ordinance amending the special uses that. Special use granted by the village board after July, or excuse me, July 18, 2022, one, shall not run with the title to the property, and two, shall not be transferable. Special uses granted by the village before July 18, 2022, shall only run with the title to the property if the ordinance granting the special use provides that the special use runs to title and property. And finally, shall only be transferable if the ordinance granting the special use provides that the special use is transferable. So hopefully that kind of clarifies that. Well, I, I'm, I'm aware of that, but if this owner should want to stay in business for 40 years doing this, they can do that if we grant this. Yeah, this doesn't expire in five years or something. This is right. Yeah. Well, could you? Could, could you, you have it? Yeah, could we? Could uh, you? Well, I, the, the, <laughs> I will say that back in like 1998, across the street here where Lael has his shop, there was a company in there that that made drill bits and they needed a special use to be there and we tried to put a sunset on it because the the master plan of the village was not to have the manufacturing in the downtown district it was to move it all out towards rock road we passed it that night at the very next meeting the attorney was John Regan. He brought it back saying you cannot set a condition of a of a time limit on a special use. Now, that was 24 years ago. Yeah. Maybe maybe something in the Illinois state statute has changed, but I'm not aware that you can put a, a sunset yeah. on. Uh, and then the other thing is, Chris, would you want to be a... <laughs> <laughs> the staff member going out and telling a business that your your your, your special use has expired. You well, got to leave. <laughs> I, I believe the, uh, there's one that we passed in the last few years that had a 10 year limit on it, a special use. I can't remember if it was the Plody uh, parking or there was one of them that, that they did put a 10 year uh, limit on it. Uh, and at, at that point, the the, at the 10 years that or part of the 10 year expires that owner could come back to the village board and ask for another special use right. for another period yeah. of time otherwise that would have to go away now depending on what what they're uh, investing in uh, and, and their investment would be in the property to to use that special use mm -hmm. would also come into play. Somebody's not going to build a factory having a special use and then say in 10 years I can't do it anymore. Right. But when you've got asphalt grindings and nothing else a there, parking a parking yeah. lot, and you say you got 10 years to use it and then you got to come back and, and if we say no, then you can't do it. I, I think that would be a different circumstance. Like, it, and that I know when I was working at a previous village, um, we, uh, we had taken, it was incorporated from Kane County and there were special uses that the county uh, approved and they had time limits on theirs. Now maybe a county's different than a village, I'm not sure, but I know they did They did some limited uh, special uses just to see, make sure that that person that was doing this business was upholding to the laws and what they said they were gonna do and not be, be a, a nuisance to neighbors. I think this is applicable in this situation because there's plans on making buildings, building buildings. We don't, we don't know if five years of those, if those right. buildings are gonna be up. It's, it's going to be a parking lot until it's not right yeah mm -hmm. yeah there's variables you don't i mean with with interest rates rising right. and you don't know what the economy is going to be right. like in a year from now mm -hmm. so, so yeah i mean you see how long things is that at prairie lakes once the economy went down it took you know <coughs> it's 10 years or 12 years to come back to where they built buildings again yeah. Yeah. so i think you know too you know it'd be a different thing if we want to recognize as a village this is what we want it to be out there and we pass an ordinance and our building code that says in that district you can do this but you know i think we're going to keep getting these you know and it's really not in the spirit of variances to, to give them um because it's, everyone out there is in the exact same situation yeah you know and they all ask for the same things so you know if, if our village decides we want to have that be 
just all truck parking. That's totally fine. That's their, we should vote that's on a, that. That's in their privy. Yeah, that's in their privy. But right now, our ordinance does not say that. It says it needs to be paved. It needs to be lit. I think it should be paved and lit. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that's what we should say. We should say that's what our law says and right. our ordinance says and what we should do. I'm lucky we can vote on it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay. Um, anything? So then we were talking. I were were all these comments? I guess we were talking about all of all of the items, or at least the first two, the, the variances. Uh, yeah, my my comments were pursuant to the the to the variances of uh, <coughs> listed in three and four. Okay. Several um, some lighting. Yeah. So do we have more comments that we we want to say on on this? No, we really don't have anything okay. other than what you guys have already covered. Okay, and do we want to move on to talking about one and two? Um, or do we want to, let's vote on these three pro and four Probably and vote, vote on these. We'll the, talk, uh, talk about one um, the other thing too, for the petitioner's sake and for the, the commission members is, if you remember from that short little hour training we did with the attorney, the other thing is the petitioner needs to essentially prove a hardship in order to get a variance and I I've not heard anything tonight in in the public hearing or from the petitioner that where they have a hardship um, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, those are the, just some additional comments that I have yep. um, you guys can a lot of those things that if you remember from our training they're in the findings of fact questions really hit hit on a lot of them either directly or the specific criteria. Um, so if you would, Chairman Bruner, I, I, would, uh, uh, I would make a motion that we deny uh, item number three and number four. Single vote? Unless, unless somebody on the commission wants to, has a differing opinion between three and four. And three and four being that they're gonna use that parking lot, you know, pretty much crushed gravel for parking lot, and then the lighting on top of that. So we right. So we're denying so both of those. D deny both of those, and if we if, if we pass the special use, and should the board follow suit, sure. then they would have to put in asphalt parking or concrete parking right. and lighting. I would second that. Okay. With the motion, I second. Any further discussion? Okay. Franco, you can call the roll, and remember, yes means deny. <laughs> You're voting to no. recommend the village board not approve. Correct. Myers? Yes. Feck? Yes. Stenick? Yes. Scarpelli? Yes. Brunner? Yes. So then on to one and two. Uh, well, actually, on to one, because two is separate. Right. So with one, a special use for outside vehicle equipment parking and storage for the property at 590 Healy Road. So this is um, to allow them to even be able to do truck parking there. Um, you know, it has different, different requirements uh, on, on what they need to prove. So uh, does anyone have any comments on the special use for truck parking? Um, I have no problem with, with the use providing they meet all of the all, all, all yes. of our, our codes for doing that type of yes mm -hmm. I 100% agree um, all of their their information on having parking is you know is appropriate it's appropriate for the area you know it's appropriate for everything there so any other comments no I'll make a motion to approve the special use okay I'll second it great we have a motion in a second Franco can you call the roll Myers? Yes. Feck? Yes. Stenick? Yes. Scarpelli? Yes. Brunner? Yes. So that motion passes. Fantastic. And then I believe on uh, item two, we had a request to uh, push this one till de to December? Yeah, the mm -hmm. December meeting, correct. Okay. So there was a request for item number two to uh, have this tabled until December. Could I have a motion? Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, table item number two for a uh, future meeting to be called by staff. I'll second that. Okay. 
Uh, Myers? Yes. Feck? Yes. Stenick? Yes. Scarpelli? Yes. Brunner? Yes. Okay. So, um, can, can I ask a step question? Uh, if they've been doing the CCDD on site for some years, why why do they need a special use for it? The, uh, the, the ordinance, the state statute states that you can do it for up to one year unless your fill permit allows you to do it for a longer period of time. Okay. So they've been doing it for about two years now. Okay. Uh, and that's why the special use would be required. And they're going to continue to do it. They want to continue it after the fill is completed, okay. which would require a special and use. And is, is it the village's belief is their reclamation completed or are they still they're, in reclamation? They're still, they're still filling. They're still reclamating. Yeah. So the, the, the state puts a time limit on it even though they're not done. With Correct. The, okay. So one year One year for salvaging. Okay. Uh, that material, right? But as I understood from the public hearing, even after you're done with a reclamation, you you want to partake in this even after. Yeah, a long-term business. Yes, yeah. the salvaging and uh, recycling operation. Yeah. Yes, we okay. would, we would look to continue that even after the the fill is complete and the CCDD permit is closed out. Makes sense. Thank you. Okay, so then moving on, uh, the next item that we'll have to cover is uh, reviewing and approving the findings of fact. Um, you can find these at the end of your packet. Um, the first one that we have is for the uh, findings of fact for special use of uh, equipment parking and storage. And I'll say right now, whenever you guys want to go, you can, you can go. Yeah. We're almost done though. <laughs> So, um, so Franco, there's slightly different answers on this than there were on our previous ones. So I want to make sure everyone has a chance to look these over. Uh, we can go through them individually if you'd like and discuss all the points individually. Um, these match your revised ones from last time to follow your logic. Okay. The same ones, are right? That you yeah. guys amended to. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I actually, you know what, I'm just going to read through them sure. and, and we'll talk yep. about it. Yep. So, so here, um, I would like, I would entertain a motion to approve the findings of fact for the special use of outside vehicle and equipment parking and storage for a 590 Healy. So going through these items, the use is not injurious to the use and enjoyment of, the, of, uh, of other property in the immediate vicinity for the purposes already permitted or substantially diminish and impair property values within neighborhood. So I think yes is the proper thing. I believe this is not injurious. It is mm -hmm. valid. Okay, the next one, the use will not impede the normal and orderly to let, uh, development and improvement of the surrounding property for uses permitted in the district. I think it will not, so yes. Um, other people are doing the same type of things right now. Um, adequate utility, and everyone agrees with that? Yeah. Yes. I'll say my thing, agree with yeah. me, disagree sure. if I. Okay. Sure. Okay. Adequate utilities, access roads, drainage, or necessary facilities have or have been or will be provided. Yes, we can see that in the diagrams. Adequate measures have been or will be taken to provide ingress and egress so designed as to minimize traffic congestions on public streets. I think definitely with the Heinz Road access now, there are existing entries. Yes. Um, how is this proposed special use in harmony with the purposes, goals, objectives, policies, and standards of the Village of East Dundee, comprehensive plan, the zoning ordinance, and other any other plan, program, or ordinance adopted or under consideration pursuant to official notice of, by the village. And uh, yeah, I think it, it falls within our industrial and office development yeah. comprehensive plan. Okay. Do you want to vote on that one? Yeah, so let's vote on that one. Uh, I entertain a motion, so if someone wants to make a motion. So moved. Okay. A second. Second. Uh, you can call. Myers? Yes. Feck? Yes. Stenick? Yes. Scarpelli? Yes. Brunner? Yes. Okay, on the next one, uh, variance. Uh, and this is the off street parking areas being paved for 590 Healy. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the findings of fact that state the property in question cannot yield a reasonable return if, uh, permitted to be used only under the conditions allowed by the regulations of the zoning district. We're saying no, you could make money on this property some other way. 
The plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances? No, because lots of neighbors have similar circumstances. The uh, variation, if granted, will not alter the essential character of the locality? I, that's yes, I think that um, yeah. mm -hmm. the, the uh, other places are already like that, so yes. The particular physical surrounding shape or topographical conditions of the specific property involved would bring a particular hardship upon the owner as distinguished from a mere inconvenience if the regulations were strictly enforced. We have no here. I, you know, if we want to discuss that a little bit more because of their compaction situation, we could. But I'm comfortable with the no. I'm comfortable with the no. Okay. okay. The conditions upon which the petition for variation is based would not be applicable generally to other property within the same zoning classification. Uh, that's no. Other people yeah. clearly have asked for this. Um, the purpose of the variation is not based exclusively upon a desire to make more money out of the property. Um, I think that should be a yes. I think so. Yeah, yeah the purpose is, is not. Yes. I think we can switch six to yes. Okay. Yes. They gave some good arguments as to why they would want to do these things. Um, and, and, yeah. So, um, then the findings of fact uh, vary. Oh, I'm sorry. Of 789. Yeah. Of 789. I yeah. always miss that one. Here you go. Yeah, so the alleged difficulty or hardship has not been created by any person presently uh, having an interest in the property. Uh, no, um, it was that way prior to this. Yeah. And then the granting of the um, variation will not be detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to other property or improvements in the neighborhood in which the property is located. I think yes, this would, would have been fine. The property variation will not impair an adequate supply of light near to adjacent property um, or substantially increase the danger of fire otherwise endangering the public safety or substantially diminish or impair property values within the neighborhood. Yes, it has no end. Um, so, may I have a motion? On to go? Uh, for discretionary purposes, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the findings of fact. Second. With, with, okay. with the amendment to that answer? Yeah, with, 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 the, with, the, with the amendment. Yes, yes exactly. Um, and the only thing I want to discuss is if we deny a variance, do we even need to approve findings of fact? Findings of, to me, findings of fact would follow a, a granting of the variance. If we're not granting the variance, I don't know that we need. I, I'm okay doing this, but yeah. I guess if staff could find out in the future yeah. if findings of fact on a denied variance are necessary. Um, well, our decisions. I mean, I, I can see where the village findings. board may find it helpful. Yes, that's exactly yeah. what I would. Yeah, I would say. Um, you know, they, they look at our meetings and they yeah. like like summaries, and the findings of fact are a good summary of what our discussion yeah. was. Yep. So, I second it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Right. Motion in a second. Myers. Yes. Feck. Yes. Stenick. Yes. Scarpelli. Yes. Runner. Yes. Okay, on to the next variance. So this will be, uh, may I, I, I would entertain a motion for the finding, uh, approving the findings of fact, or approving or denying the findings of fact on uh, 590 Healy in regards to a variance from section 157149D. Lighting. Yeah, lighting. The property in question cannot yield a reasonable return if permitted to be used only under the conditions allowed by the regula regulations in that zoning district. Uh, no. no. The plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances. No. no. The variation, if granted, will not alter the essential character of the locality. Uh, yes. Uh, the particular physical surroundings, shape, or topographical conditions of the specific property involved would, be, would bring a particular hardship upon the owner as distinguished from a very convenience if the regulations were strictly enforced. No. The conditions upon which the petition for variation is base would not be applicable generally to other property within the same zoning classification. No, we've had that one yeah. requested. The purpose of the variation is not based exclusively upon a desire to make more money out of the property. I think that's a yes. Yeah. Oh, well, so yes would mean that there's some other reason, right, for not doing it? Well, no, yes would be that, that it's they're, related to they're not willing or not wanting to put up lights. Yeah is 
to me, I take that as they don't want to make the expenditure to yeah, put on the lights. So, agree. so it, it, it's it's they they do want the variance to make more, not necessarily to make more money, but to save them money. So yes. I think this is a double no, though. You need to have the no for that to come through, right? So the purpose of the variation is not based on exclusive. If you if you mm -hmm. said yes, right, it would be exclusive. Okay. <laughs> Just always confuse myself. Some no is correct. Yeah, the purpose of the variation is not based exclusively, but it is based exclusively. Right. On. So we need. It would be a yes. Then. It is a yes. yes. It is. Yeah. Yes. Seven, eight, nine. So for seven, the alleged difficulty or hardship has not been created by any person person presently having an interest in the property. Uh, that's a no, right? Yeah. The granting of the variation will not be detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to the other property or improvements in the neighborhood in which the property is located. Yes. Property yes. variation will not be impaired. In adequate supply of light and air to adjacent properties substantially increase the danger of fire, otherwise endanger the public safety or substantially diminish or impair property values within the neighborhood. Yes. yes. I just clarification number six. The purpose of the variation is not based exclusively upon a desire to make more money. So it sh should be. <laughs> right? I mean, that's on you guys. Right. I mean, I, I, I read it and then I read it again. But yes. So if you say this, if I say this statement to you right now, the purpose of this variation is not exclusively upon a desire to make more money. Would you say you agree with that or disagree with that? The purpose is not to make more money. Excuse me. It, yeah, well, <laughs> based on that, I would say that we're not supposed to consider the making of money or, or a anything. We're supposed to be looking at the land use. So it, um, it to me, it, it, it's a question we shouldn't be answering. Well, it's, it's one of the hardship <laughs> tests. It's a hardship test. Yeah, so right. this is asking, are they going to make more money on this variance? No. You know, yeah. So. The way it's worded is the purpose of the vari the variation is not based on making more money. That would that's what the yes would be. So right. So the no is actually if you if you say no, that means it is for making money, right? That's how I see it. That's how I see it, and that's how we voted. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So we want to re retract the yes and make it back keep it no. Yeah, I, I I don't like the terminology, but it, yeah, it, 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 it it's it's confusing and and. So right now, as is, keep number six as presented. Yes. Continue to number seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Your motion second. Vote on it. Go back and amend your, uh, amend your the previous. Earlier. Well, I think my the previous one I actually agreed. With. Yeah. Right. If you switch it, yes. I heard my comments where I said they presented some arguments where, you know, truly, they, this other one may be better performing in there. That's yeah. a reasonable argument. Yeah. And it'll be easier, you know. It'll be safer, you know. Won't throw chunks of broken. That's reasonable. You know, yeah. asphalt yeah. around, yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's reasonable. So right now, uh, number six is as presented. As presented. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you do number seven, eight, nine. And, and we did seven, eight, and nine. Okay. So that's can I have a motion to approve or deny uh, as presented? Motion to approve. Fantastic. Second. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, Myers. Yes. Beck. Yes. Stanek. Yes. Carpelli? Yes. Brunner? Yes. Okay. Okay. That concludes all of our new business. Um, at this point, I'd like to move on to our final uh, last two, I, I guess, items of business. The first one, is there anyone wishing to present any other business uh, at tonight's meeting? Right there. So uh, if no commissioners have anything, I, I just want to talk about something where I'm not going to make, I'm not going to ask for you guys to make a motion on this, but just a consensus really. Um, for, did you want to, did you want to go ahead and talk about it? Or, yeah. yeah, I thought you were going to present it, but if you want me to. Yeah, you could. Yeah. So and this is uh, on the, um, <laughs> I didn't look at the ordinance. But what, what we're looking at bringing is, in a, is a new uh, set of code and ordinances we can review in our uh, meetings that we haven't done in the past. This is the one we want to talk about. 
Uh, or do you want me to talk about the other one? Talk about the other one. Okay, yeah. that I did bring. Yeah. Okay, we talked. We had a, a, a talk uh, earlier today. So, um, so one of the things that I think we should be doing as a commission is going and visiting all the properties that we we uh, you know have to review, so we get you know firsthand familiarity of of our petitioners, of our residents, of our businesses. So one of the things I found in Tasha here, you know, she, she ran into me snooping around on her property is what I'm sure it looked like. And I didn't have really a way to prove, like I was there on official business, that this is something that we need to be doing. And you know, there's, there's all sorts of reactions you may get. So I, would, I was hoping we could get, you know, some sort of like ID badge, some type of card, something that we can give or maybe we, we, we and we make we make sure when you know applicants file that we say you know there will be authorized people visiting your property. They will have ID badges. You know expect to see them, right? Mm -hmm. You know I know they have a nice uh, no trespassing sign. You know and I probably I wasn't going to go in and other than that she she found. Me. Yeah. So <laughs> would you guys be comfortable with me asking for something that gives you guys better direction on how to do site visits or like. Some towns do field trips, you know, you don't yes. necessarily have to do that, but just so you guys could maybe understand a little bit better what we're talking about rather than aerial footage or something. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Cool. definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, and then um, what I was gonna talk about too, thanks for bringing that up, yeah. was uh, I'm gonna include in the village board packet for Monday, this upcoming uh, meeting, is like fences were not in the purview of the Planning and Zoning Commission where you guys couldn't vote on it unless I amended our code to clean it up. I'm going to be giving you guys authority, uh, presenting the Village Board to give you guys authority if they agree and uh, vote yes, for you guys to also make a motion and recommendations on 158, which is minimum landscaping, screening, and tree pre preservation standards. When I started here, I noticed you guys did a lot of these before, but this is kind of like a cleanup item where you guys technically didn't have the, yeah, authority. the authority. So I'm cleaning mm -hmm. this up. So if you guys are okay with it without your recommendation, then we're just going to go straight to the village board for their consideration. Just a, a, a head nod is okay if you guys are okay with it, unless you guys want to talk about it. It's up to you guys. If then not, it would go through us first. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, right. Right. I figured much, and mm -hmm. that's why I went straight to, to make a recommendation to the village board mm -hmm. to clean things up, more of like yeah. a um, house cleaning. Yes. House house cleaning of yes. the ordinance. There's a lot of that to do, so this was one of them. But uh, those two things is really all I had. I don't know if Chris had anything. No. no. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, great. With that, I would entertain a uh, motion to adjourn. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll okay. Second. And then what? Let's just, uh, I've got a motion and a second. You could do a voice vote for this. Voice vote. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay, that was everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Let me turn off the camera. The ayes carry. Motion uh, passed. We're adjourned.